M0FXB, welcome to my channel. So we're just learning the firmware process of the Yaesu FT991. So we've gone to the Yaesu site and we've got two lots of programs to download. One is the driver, which is here, virtual COM port driver. And when we get that, it looks like this. And we're just gonna go to the one that's here that says 64. So that's all that one there, double click and just run it. Okay, next, we'll just go next, next, next. And, and it's we've run the USB driver, so that's fine. Then we're going to go down to this one here, FT991A, all current firmware. Click that, and we get another zip. And we, when it when we click it, it will look like this. And we'll click it, and we'll extract it to a, fol a folder on our PC that we have named 991. Okay, so let's just go to FT991. Got it here somewhere. Pretty sure it's on our desktop. Uh, lots of files there it is there click and then click OK and it'll just put it in that folder so we've got that so we have got the instructions here we're going to um, read them and do them one at a time remember we're just sort of doing the theory side now we're just learning so to, to, to know what firmware you're currently running just get to your 991 hold down the A and B here and the AB these two buttons here turn on the transceiver and it will display the firmware that you're currently running. If you're lucky, you don't need to do this. So we've done that, let's scroll down, and this is what you would see, and obviously the current firmware will be shown. Scroll down, let's just do one at a time. So the first one we're gonna do is the main firmware. So go to the file, now remember where that is, that you named, put in your 991 folder. So here's ours with the, the four files that we need. And uh, let's just follow the thing. So to get it into the correct mode, we need to turn off the transceiver and push TXW and split at the same time to get it into firmware upgrade, up, sorry, main firmware mode. So let's just double check, TXW and split, which if we go to the radio, you're gonna be holding down this button here and split. And then whilst turning on, hold down, you know, turn it on holding these two buttons and it will now be in the firmware mode that it needs to be to run this program. So let's run the program. So firmware first, or main firmware first, double click, and then see that these are the files that it uses, but the one you're using is this colored one here, double click, and you get this window. And when you put the, when you hold those buttons and turn it on, it will now allow you to write. Now it won't allow, allow me to write, um, because um, I'm, I'm not connected to the radio, but if you look, if you hover over the word right, it actually shows you the instructions. Number one, disconnect the DC cable, connect the USB cable, connect the DC cable while pressing the TX and split button and, and, and turn it on, yeah? So that, that's it, you're in the, in the correct mode now, okay? And then it, it's, when you click right, it will work. So that's that one done, let's click out of that and let's go down to the next one. So we do the main first and now we're going to be doing have a look here. Just reading to the next section. Yeah, so that was this is this what we're seeing now is what I just explained to you. When you when you've done that properly, it will allow you to write, and this is what you're going to see when it writes. And of course, don't turn the radio off. Uh, and that's it. And confirm at the end, and you click OK. And then there's a sort of end of process here. Uh, click OK, turn off the external power, disconnect the USB cable connecting the transceiver to the personal computer, turn off the external power supply unit's power, press and hold the power key, and pressing the MFM list key on transceiver main panel, turning on the transceiver's power reset procedure, confirm that the unit's power has turned on, and press and hold the power to turn it off. This completes the firmware upgrade process, so it seems like you have to do like a reset here um, to move on to the next section. Now it says how to update the DSP firmware. So we go back to our file. We're gonna find FT991. Double click, and then we're gonna go DSP. And then again, we've got this little window. And if we hover, it's gonna tell us what buttons to hold down. So it looks like we have to press the F and the menu and the band keys while turning on. This is for DSP, so it's F menu, F menu and band while turning on. So let's try that. So F menu and band, so it's these three keys here, F, 
menu and band turn on the transceiver you'll be in the correct mode and when you do that this program should see you and when you click right it will run so and then if you go down like I just said and then it will show the process working DSP for 991A click OK and then you've got that exit process so press and hold the power key on the transceiver's main panel turning off click end disconnect the USB cable uh, this completes so there's no reset to do there at all so let's go down to the next bit the next bit is the TFT firmware so let's go back to our file 991 and we're looking for TFT next one down TFT okay and again we're going to follow those instructions so it's uh it's not gonna we've got nothing to hover on here so we are gonna have to have a look here see what we have to do to get into the right process so let's have a look how to update the TFT the following procedures are described for Windows 7 confirm that the radio is turned off then disconnect DC cable and all other cables from the transceiver unit. Connect the transceiver's unit USB terminal and personal computer USB port via a standard cable. Right, so this time we've got to press, while pressing the virtual com port drive must be installed. Yeah, we've done the virtual com port. It's FM list, band and mode. FM list, band and mode. So let's have a look. FM list, band and mode. So this time it's the top button, band and mode. So hold them down, turn on the radio and you're going to be in the right mode. So now we go back to our file. This is the TFW, look, these are the files it uses. Double click. You've held down those buttons and turned it on. And um, so this time when you select the correct COM port that you are connected to, now just go right click, device manager. and then look for it in your COM ports. It's not on now because I'm not connected because this is just theory we're learning. And once you've selected the correct COM port, you'll be able to select the file, which we can't do. Well, we can select it, but it's not gonna write. And you'll be able to click update. You won't have an error because um, you would have the radio connected. So let's just show you that file select again. Look, the TFT file gets selected automatically. So it's pretty good. So let's just end that. We'll come out of that. So we've done that, and then let's look at the exit. So it does it on the TFW COM port select uh, select screen. Set the COM port number. The COM port. Yeah, we've already said that, and that's what it looks like when it's running. You select there, and then it says firmware update. Click the OK button. Exit is press and hold the power, turning off. Click the end button. Disconnect the cable, and that's it. So. Now, lastly, it's how to update the C4FM DSP firmware We're using the PC tool. So, confirm the radio is turned off, then disconnect DC cable and all the cables transceiver. Connect the transceiver's USB terminal and personal computer USB port via a standard commercial cable. This time, you're going to hold down FM list, menu, and mode. So, let's have a look. FM list, menu, and the bottom one, mode. So mode, menu, FM list. Turn on the radio, and you're going to be in the correct process for now doing the D, is it, what are they calling it? The C4 FM DSP. So we're just going to click this file here. Go to 991. And now it's the PC tool. So you're already in the correct mode, you're going to do this, come up with this window, COM, you're going to select the COM, use the device manager again, get the right one, if it's the right one, it's going to detect it, when you click click OK, it's giving me an error because I'm not doing it, and then what you're going to see, if we look at the instructions here, if when you do it correctly, you're going to set the correct and click OK, and look, it's now going to say this, and you're going to select update, like so, uh, and then it, you're going to click OK, and it's, you'll get the green bar, click OK, uh, press and hold the power key to the main panel, turning off the transceivers, then exit. Uh, looks like that's it. So that's all the instructions. So hopefully that's enough learning for actually doing the firmware update. I really recommend you 
do something like this. Get your head around the whole process first, then then actually do it, and you'll be you'll, you'll find the whole thing a bit more familiar. And you'll, you'll be up to the latest firmware. So seven three. I'm just having a look to see if this instruction manual does actually tell us the the latest firmware numbers. If we go near the top. Have a look. Mm, it doesn't actually give us any numbers, does it? How to update, we know all that. Well, we've got this number here, AH067. So I suppose you can look at the numbers there, and I'll quickly look at the site. You go all firmware, DSP, you are getting the date here of 062420. So it's not brand new, is it? So thanks for watching 73 and catch you on air. All the best.